I don't want to have slides here to, to go over. Um, it's kind of more for this talk on live migration. I want to queue up um, some context for, for Mike to come over and, and take over and really get to the meat of the whole uh, process here. So what we have in our data centers, especially in the commute side, you can think of millions of servers with tens of millions of drives in them with you know, even hundreds of millions of VMs running on top of all of that. And with that process, um, as something is happening in the system, we can have something that's either scheduled or unscheduled. Uh, I work from Microsoft over here is, has to deal with a lot of the unscheduled issues that we have in our systems. And so with that, we need the ability to, and if we do, so let me back up. If we don't have the ability to do live migration, if something has to happen or something you know, goes wrong, we either have to wait a long time for all the VMs to kind of drain off that node and then do something with it. Or if we have to do it precipitously, we have to kill those VMs, which is causing those VMs to end abruptly, which is customer pain, which we don't want because um, they yell us about it. And so with that, we want the introduction of the process of live migration to allow us to take a VM from one node and put it on another node such that the VM really didn't notice that that happened. And so to make that happen, you have to have some stuff around what Mike will talk about, the ability to kind of migrate the data, migrate some of the state, um, get the VM to kind of stop writing to the, to the source of uh, uh, processing the source node um, and then get it moved over and everything and then bring it back up quickly so that the VM can keep doing its work. Um, and so with that, we can say, okay, so you need that, that process. Well, today, right now, um, many different hyperscalers do this and they kind of do it yeah, similar-ish. And so the idea here is that with this standardization of NVMe, we can take, say, Google's implementation, take Microsoft's implementation, get them married together in a seamless way so they can be standardized across the industry in NVMe. So with that... My name is Mike Allison. Um, just want to say that I'm one of the key authors on this and taking everybody's inputs and we work with the whole NVMe membership to come up with a solution. Um, this is in development, so what I'm presenting to you is just an overview of the direction that we're going for it. I'm not going to say that this will be the final solution, but it kind of gives you an idea of, of what we're doing and what we're thinking about and some of the challenges that we have. So, um, yeah, it's an ugly picture of me. I'm from Samsung. I work on standardizations. I'm going to go over a little bit of the benefits, give a high level view and some considerations that we're looking at. So, as Lee said, they need to move a VM from one NVM subsystem to another. And I'm going to be using the NVMe terms. I'm not going to be saying nodes a lot or whatever there. If you go to Wikipedia and you say, well, what does live migration mean? They broke it up into three phases. And before I get into that, we're not just moving the VM. We're moving, in some cases, the attached NVMe namespaces along with that. Because when you move the VM, he wants to talk to the namespaces that he was talking to, but he wants to get to the same data on the other side. So we're going to talk about not just moving the controller, but the namespaces as well. And when you go to Wikipedia, they talk about three phases. There is this pre-copy, hey, start your migration. And when we talk about live migration is we're moving the data associated with the VM that's in the memory of the source server of what they're going and copying that somewhere else while he's running. So then you have to keep track of what changed while it's happening. Well, you have the same thing happening in NVMe because you have IO commands still happening from that VM and the LBAs are changing and how do we deal with the what we call we're going to be calling the dirty LBAs and so we have to start that mechanism and then we have to track it um, and then you get to a point where you stop and and you say hey I want to stop flush everything out now I need now we're stopped so now let's move over the final state and continue on the other side um, we're also thinking about looking at not just the LBAs but NVMe does commands, and those commands may cause the VM's memory to be modified. You read a uh, Git log page, we're going to write data into the area, into the VM, and we're looking at whether we want to do that or not. I'm not going to focus this presentation on here, but we can do the same for any uh, memory that gets changed along with the LBAs as we go along, and it fits within those 
phases that we've defined. So what we ended up doing is it's really a big task and we've broken it up into multiple tasks. The first one I'm going to talk about is we're going to allow namespaces and in the controller it can track and report which LBAs in a namespace are actually allocated and have been written. If you create a namespace there's no allocated LBAs, it's empty. And the question is, if I'm going to do a migration, do I have to copy over every LBA over, or can I just copy over the ones that have actually been written? And this has other use cases outside of live migration, snapshotting or other things. So we separated out a separate TP. That TP should be ratified within about a month. Um, so we're breaking this up. We're now working on TP 4159, which is how do we do the overall live migration and what services is the NVMe controller going to provide to allow the host to do the migration. And the concept of this, the host is doing most of the work because you're having one server talk to another server, which is really outside the scope of NVMe, but we're providing the services to go and get that state and move it over to the other side. And then there's another T part going to come in and you got this live VM running. And he could be doing a lot of transactions and the amount of dirty stuff happening is as fast as we're moving it over and will the live migration ever end? Well, we we're going to look at how do we dial him down so we slow him down so we can get caught up, do the final migration and then let him go full bore across there. We're still working on that T-PAR, but this is the phase of which we're going through things. So before we get there, um, I'm... They always ask me to do my animations because I like to think of the system and how is the system operating and where's data going through and how is it going through wires. So in here we have a, a source host connected to this NVM subsystem and I have this VM with controller Y. This is the VM and the controller that we're going to migrate and I have one namespace attached. Um, and right now this namespace exists, it has LBAs allocated, and this is the initial TPAR that we said that we're going to keep an allocation map in the NVM system and such that this host could come in and say, go read the mapping and tell me which LBAs are actually mapped so I can go do read commands and, and do that. So this is what's happening. And what we want to do is we want to take this controller state, this namespace, and this VM and move it over here to what I'm calling the target. Okay, so that's part putting it into context. So with that, the first thing we have to do is start the whole sequence. So we're going to be adding a command that says, hey, start a live migration. Well, if I'm going to start a live migration, I got to start logging stuff because I need to keep tracking of what's being changed. Well, as soon as we start a live migration, we have to keep track of all of the LBAs that are going to be dirty from this point on. Because from the host point of view, once we start, He's going to be trying to read the static view while we're keeping track of the, the dirty things, of the dirty LBAs. So this command will come in and we'll start tracking. And this is going to create what we're calling a migration queue. Now, I don't have that migration queue anywhere in there. We're trying to figure out where this is going to live. It's going to live in the host. It's going to live in the controller. The idea of this queue is it's going to be a place to put the logical blocks that have changed during the live migration by the VM that's being migrated. When that completes now, I'm showing that the VM is moving over to the target. What I'm really trying to say is, at this point in time, if the host wants to, he could take a snapshot of the static view of the VM and start migrating it. But from an NVMe point of view, that's up to the host. They can do that at any given time. But, it, but he's going to be migrating the VM from one machine to the other, which has nothing to do with the namespaces and the controller state that I'm going to be focusing on, which is where the NVMe is focusing the technical proposal. So at this point in time, we started tracking the dirty logical blocks that are occurring by the VM and controller Y. Now we can use what we're using the get LBA status, which is the command that we're going to use to go get the list of LBAs that are actually allocated in the system. This is not obtaining the actual logical block data, but the sequence of LBAs that have changed so that the administrative host can go read them and send them over to the administrative host in the target and then they could write them. And so that command comes in, a list of LBAs go back to this administrative host um, and then the administrative host, one could do a read on one side, force it over to the other server on the other side and that admin host can write. And so when you're done with, while this is, this is all going on while the live migration is still occurring, but at this point in time, the, on the target host, that namespace over there should have the static view 
of the namespace allocation map that is occurring on the left. Now there is a race condition. Okay, we got, we're trying to move things over, the VM comes down and he does a write, the allocation map will actually be also addressed, so if the reads by that source target is reading them, he may get um, some allocations that happened after the live migration started, but that's okay because the, the migration queue is also gonna be in there and the, it'll all be orderly and effectively done at the same time. While that's all going on, um, what happens now is commands could happen on the VM, as I said, that change the LBAs. A write could come in that write, or, uh, rewrites an LBA or writes an initial allocation of LBA, but you can also get data set management commands that trim data and say they're no longer valid anymore. So those become out of the allocation map. So I'm just gonna walk through a write command, comes in through the VM that's happening, and what's gonna happen is you'll see the allocation map gets updated because we did a write and it was to a, a logical blocks that weren't allocated. That's why a new little black bar showed up on the left. But we're gonna take those LBAs and put them in the migration queue in the order so they can be played back later on top of the namespace. So when we're done with the migration, the namespace in the target system matches the namespace in the source host system. So what happens then is the VM is still running. We're pushing in dirty LBAs into this migration queue. Well, the host can play this mi dirty migration queue and read data from the source and write them on the right in order. And so we just have this dirty is being updated on the target and yet the, the live migration is going on and that continues on for some point in time. And then at some point in time, the host is gonna say, okay, we're gonna stop. Stop the VM, stop issuing commands. Um, we're also gonna come in and we're gonna issue a command to say, stop controller Y. We're gonna pause it. And by pausing it, what it means is stop fetching commands from the queue, process all the commands of the com uh, process all the commands that you've already fetched, and get to a state that you're you're clean inside, um, and you just have the queues that you haven't processed yet or fetched. When that process is done, now the controller Y is paused, the VM is paused. Now we're ready to go and. Um, the host is free to now move the VM over because there's no operations happening. They can go complete that migration. The hosts can work at finishing up with the dirty LBAs and moving them over such that the namespace in the NVM subsystem on the target now matches the namespace in the host system and the subsystem on the left. And now we're at a point where everything is stable and so now we can go get the controller state of controller Y. This is, um, hey, where are the queues in your pointers to the queues? Where's the heads and tails and stuff like that? It can be migrated over to the host. The host can do a set to con uh, state for controller Y to put him in the same state. So this way, when we eventually will uh, start the controller H, he's starting at where he left off in, in where the queues were in the head and tail pointers. Um, then at, at the very end, we're all ready to go. The target host can say, okay, start resuming, and now controller Y is up, and we've now migrated everything over to the right. At this point, the host is free to go over to the source and reset the controller over there to get that controller up for some additional work or what, however they want to do it there. And now what we've done is we've migrated over to there. Where we are right now, we're working on this, what is the state that we're do, dealing with, we've got different use cases, where the migration queue is going. So we're gonna be focusing on getting this technical proposal and then we'll work on that new TPAR. And then when all three are done, then we'll say, hey, we have successfully started live migration. Um, and this is just a high level overview of where we are and kind of the concept. And we're hoping we come here next year and have all the details for you um, with ratified technical proposals. So with that, any, I have done, any questions?